What's up guys, it's Mackie Galax and today's video is the first in my series on building your own Hackintosh or your own custom Mac. Um, this is a complete beginner's guide so you don't need to come um, to this build with any experiences uh, at all. But first we have a few questions that we need to get out of the way. The first is of course, what is a Hackintosh and what's a custom Mac? So we'll take a look at that uh, briefly in a little while. The second question is um, why I chose to install the OSX operating system on my build as opposed to the Windows operating system. I mean, both could equally well be installed in the system, so I'll go a little into that based on the purposes that I'm building the system for. And the third question I wish to address before I jump into the building of the system is why it is that I chose to build my own Hackintosh as opposed to just buying one fresh off the shelf from the Apple store, which would seem to have been a much more simpler um, option. So first up, what is a Hackintosh? Well, very simply, a Hackintosh, or a custom Mac as um, some people will put it, is very simply a PC, a regular PC, where you install the OS X operating system or the Apple operating system onto it. Now, this may seem a little bit involved at first, but if you choose your parts carefully, and I do have to stress this, your parts have to be chosen carefully in order to work well with the OS X operating system. For example, Apple um, contracts Gigabyte to make their motherboards, so it's a known fact that Gigabyte motherboards tend to work pretty much out of the box with uh, the OS X operating system. Having said that, it is possible to get other motherboards to work well with it. So that's why it's called a Hackintosh because there is a little hacking involved, but not to worry because there's a large community out there that will help you out um, with any issues that you might have, uh, especially with choosing the initial parts for your build because there are people out there who have experimented with many different parts and have come up with the ideal parts that will um, basically address all of your needs, uh, be it video processing, music production, or even gaming on the Macintosh. So why Mac and not Windows? Well, technically it is possible to dual boot both Mac and Windows on the system that I'm building, but for the purposes of the system, I'll be focusing solely on the Mac operating system. In fact, you can even triple boot, you can even triple boot Windows, Mac, and Linux. But again, let's focus on Mac for, for the moment. The reason I'm choosing to install Mac is because my system is mainly going to be focused on uh, video editing and I just find that the Mac operating system is much simpler to work with. I don't have to deal with viruses um, that tend to crop up on Windows operating systems. It crashes less often, it's just overall a smoother operating system to use um, for everyday purposes and there are also a lot of powerful video editing software out there that are made there's made for the Mac so this decision was quite simple in the future down the road I might decide that I want to install Windows on it for um, a little gaming but I'm not a real hardcore gamer so I'm going to be focusing on just installing the Mac operating system on the system for now we now come to the question that most of you will probably be wondering um, and that is why would I go through the trouble of sourcing these parts that uh, may not be compatible with the OS X operating system at the end of the day, uh, why not just walk into the Apple store, buy a Mac, and then walk back out and have it work 100% once you plug it in? Well, there's several reasons. The number one reason that I'm deciding to bring my uh, build my own system is because of cost. You could save more than half um, the amount by building your own system and yet still have the same performance. We'll hopefully get to be able to run a bit of benchmarking, um, although real world performance sometimes does not have a lot of correlation with, ben with benchmarking, but it is a place to start. So once we finish the build, we'll do a bit of benchmarking and see how it compares with um, systems cost-wise, price-to-performance ratio versus um, off-the-shelf systems from the Apple Store. A Mac Pro from the Apple Store nowadays will set you back probably about three or four thousand dollars. Uh, my build is focused on getting everything under about a thousand to a thousand five hundred dollars so we'll see how far we can stretch that. The second reason that I'm choosing to build my own system is purely out of curiosity because 
I'm, I like the technicality of being able to put together a system and actually get something to work that does not or may not work very smoothly uh, at first and to try and get that to the point where it actually runs exactly like a real Mac. So we'll see how we deal with those challenges in future videos. Third and final reason that I'm choosing to build my own system is because of customizability. So there are an enormous range of motherboards, uh, processors, graphics cards, RAMs out there that I can choose from um, to build my system. So I can tailor each part specifically for my purposes. And you can also overclock your system. You can overclock the RAM, the GPU, the CPU to points where you know you, you could actually get the most out of it, the most bang for your buck, as it were, uh, for the price that you pay for a system. And you may not be able to do these things that easily if you were to buy an off-the-shelf Apple computer. For example, if I were to go out and buy an iMac, everything is sealed in. I can't really change the graphics card down the road um, if I decided to do a bit more gaming. I can't really upgrade the hard drive or the RAM as easily as I could if I were to put my own system together because I would know my system inside out and it would be really easy for me to upgrade the system down the road. So this was just a brief introductory video on my Hackintosh project. It's going to take us a while to get through the whole thing. In the next video, I'd like to talk about the parts that I chose, why I chose those parts. Well, the main reason for choosing parts would be for compatibility, but there'll be other reasons and we'll talk about those reasons as well in the next video. In the meantime, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates because there will be many more updates coming as we go along through this project of building the Hackintosh.